All right. I thought I would talk to you this morning a bit about uh, the use of film and video as a catalyst for social change as we applied it at Memorial University over the last 25 years through uh, extension and internationally, more recently, through the Don Snowden Center for Development Support Communications. And uh, that's named that because Don Snowden, who had been uh, the director of the extension service for uh, the late mid-60s until the mid-70s, um, had been responsible for initiating and pioneering uh, a process in using film and video which has become known throughout the world as the FOGO process. Uh, it's called the FOGO process because the work started on the island of FOGO, uh, in, uh, as you know, off the northeast coast of Newfoundland. Uh, and that was 1967. At that time, uh, we had a field service at Extension that consisted of three people. Uh, they were not academics. Uh, in fact, none of them at that point in time had been to university. But they were wise people who understood and knew and came from rural Newfoundland. And doing uh, social development in the 60s was in some ways a piece of cake because the issues were so apparent and uh, there was so little being done in that in the mid 60s and this may surprise some of you depending on how old you are <laughs> most places in rural Newfoundland still did not have broadcast television even reliable uh, radio reception, like I don't believe CBC Radio reached Fogo Island in, in, in the mid-60s. Roads were still a problem in many, many places. Community councils or municipal government was relatively new, and only the major communities outside of St. John's, Grand Falls, Gander, and Cornerbrook uh, had municipal government at that time. Uh, and in particular in the 60s, the whole of rural Newfoundland was uh, perceived itself to be under threat because of a federal provincial program to uh, offer incentives for people to move to growth centers as a solution to the problems of servicing the smaller communities, what we now call the resettlement program. And those incentives uh, often uh, were really disincentives in that you would not provide school teachers, postmasters, or pay the doorkeeper to move out of the community, close down the ferry or whatever, and pretty soon the uh, community would be uh, so stressed that the people had no alternative but to say, yes, we'll take the resettlement money and move to a growth center. Uh, this was in a time uh, when Canada overall was starting to expand, uh, just as Trudeau became the Prime Minister, but Newfoundland was still having real difficulties in its rural areas. And um, the, there was a National Secretariat on Poverty, which funded the National Film Board of Canada to uh, look at poverty. And they, that was through a program called Challenge for Change. And the Challenge for Change program sent one of their most famous filmmakers to Newfoundland, Colin Lowe, uh, to make a film on rural poverty. And he contacted Don Snowden of the Extension Service and they went around rural Newfoundland looking for a place. Fred Earl, who was from Change Islands and was working in the Fogo Island area, was the field worker then, and he joined them. And they chose Fogo Island because it was a very nice 
microcosm of conditions in the rest of Newfoundland. Uh, there were 5,000 people on the island in some 10 communities. Uh, they were under th threat or being pressured to relocate to so-called growth, growth centers, but they had had a, an interesting and productive history and felt that there were opportunities on the island they had already had some experience with the fishermen's union and cooperatives, and they had something called the Fogo Island uh, Improvement Committee. So, Colin Lowe, with his crew from the National Film Board, decided to uh, do his documentary on Fogo Island. And as you know, a traditional film documentary is scripted by the filmmaker and from the filmmaker's point of view tells the story of the people and Colin Lowe departed from that he did not write a script he shot he first of all he and his crew spent considerable amount of time on the island just getting to know the people and he also uh, selected as apprentices to the crew Fogo Islanders, or at least local Newfoundlanders. Brian Hennessy was one of them at the time, who was with the Philadelphia Cream Cheese, and their music is on some of the films. Randy Coffin from Joe Bat's Arm was chosen, and he became one of the sound men in the film unit later at Memorial University. So uh, they hung around the island, and the first thing he did was he just shot the children playing games. And we have a little film, 15-minute film, called The Children of Fogo Island, and it's marvelous. It's not a word of script, uh, and all you do is see the children playing with their toys and doing their own games. And not one single thing that they use was purchased in a store. They made their, you know, the hoops and the kites and the model plane which they rode about in the harbor. And uh, everything they did was either created by themselves or done uh, working with their parents with the fish flakes or hauling rocks out of the field or bringing hay home with a pony or whatever. And that kind of set the tone in that all of the other films uh, turned out the same way in that a lot of people uh, were talked to. There was very little scenery. It was mostly people just talking about their lives, but not only their problems. They would talk about the things that they enjoyed, what they saw as the strengths of the island, what they saw as the problems on the island, what they thought the role of women should be. There was no one theme. And as a totality, it presented the society and the culture of Fogo Island. And Colin Lowe made a deliberate decision not to put all this together into a scripted film. And he left them as modules, which uh, were usually anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes long. And we wound up with about 28 of them in black and white film. That was the first thing that was different from a traditional documentary film. The second thing was rather than screening that, these films uh, f for the Canadian public through its distribution offices at first, as the National Film usually does, it brought them back to Fogo Island and showed them first and foremost to the, Fo the people of Fogo Island. And during an intensive period of screening in the fall of 1967, we estimate uh, Four or 5,000 people saw those films on the island. And they were shown with the field worker who used the films as a bridge or a catalyst for discussion of local issues. And what was exciting was that a number of things happened through the process of the people looking at themselves. Uh, first of all, many people on Fogo Island, like elsewhere in those days and earlier in Newfoundland and Labrador, didn't believe that they had any knowledge of value because they'd had no formal schooling. They said, we don't know anything. We have no learning. 
and then they blow you away with their knowledge and uh, obvious intelligence. But they didn't appreciate this because they had always, uh, with cap in hand, as they said on film, bowed to the minister, the church minister, or bowed to the merchant, the fish merchant, or bowed to the uh, government people who occasionally would come there and who had been elected uh, there because they had been told that that would be their riding. There was no local nominations in those days. So they saw themselves on film and first of all, seeing themselves this way uh, was like seeing themselves in a totally new way and in a way that other people uh, would see them. And it excited them because they said, geez, we're not so stupid after all. We're, we're pretty articulate and we know what we're talking about. And we ought to let people know what we know. And so it was a tremendous boost of confidence. And then uh, the other thing that they saw in watching themselves was that, geez, we've been one against the other. We've all been fighting each other. I want it here. I want it there. This community wants it. That community wants it. When if we looked at ourselves as an island community, we might get a lot farther than looking at ourselves as 10 separate settlements. So that also built confidence, built cohesion, consensus. Uh, 